Um, when, hmm, I don't like that at all. That's cool. Um, so when we're looking at this problem, guys, what we're basically trying to, again, understand is the cosecant inverse of negative 2 is basically saying, you know, what is going to be the angle? That's what we're trying to find. So another way to write this, which I, you know, which we worked in, where does this cosecant inverse come from? It's really asking us cosecant of some angle equals negative square root of 2. So the cosecant of some angle, just like kind of we did there, there I gave you the angle. But we're saying now, I'm saying the cosecant of some angle equals negative square root of, equals negative square root of 2. And again, to get to that, we just did the cosecant inverse of both sides. Um, and that's how we use that in for, that's how we got that to that notation, because it's just the inverse operation. So to solve something like this, <clears throat> this isn't really as easy as an apparent as it is with sine or cosine. So one thing that I recommend doing is saying, well, why don't we just rewrite this in terms of its reciprocal function? Because we're a little bit more familiar with the reciprocal function. So I could rewrite this as 1 over sine of theta is equal to negative square root of 2. Do you guys agree with that? No? Of course you can't, 1 over sine. And then I could multiply by the sine of theta on both sides to get sine of theta off the denominator. So I have 1 equals negative square root of 2 times sine of theta. To solve for sine of theta, I could divide by the square root of 2, divide by negative square root of 2. And I have sine of theta equals 1 over negative square root of 2. When you rationalize the denominator, you get negative square root of 2 over 2. So sine of theta equals negative square root of 2 over 2. And again, what we're asking is sine of what angle equals negative square root of 2 over 2? What angle? So we've got to think, well, what angle do we know of that even gives us the sine of square root of 2 over 2, which would be one angle pi over 4. Do, 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 pi over 4. That coordinate point is square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. Sine represents the y coordinate. So you guys can see that the sine of pi over 4 would give you positive square root of 2 over 2. But we need to give an angle that is negative. So that means our angle needs to be down here or down here. right? It needs to be in the third and the fourth quadrant. And what we learned last class period is that the domain is restricted for sine when we're finding the inverse between the first and the fourth quadrant. So therefore, we can mark this, ang this point off. Whatever that angle is, that's not going to work. This angle also doesn't work because to go from um, positive x-axis to that angle <coughs> is, is going to have to travel through the second and third quadrant. So that's not going to fall within our domain. However, we can find a coterminal angle and just directly go there in the negative direction. So obviously, from here to here is pi over 4. Then from there to there is just going to be negative pi over 4. So the cosecant inverse of negative 2 is just equal to negative pi over 4. Yes? Well, they're restricted across your sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay. Yeah, like what I'm saying is this is the same thing as me asking this. Okay. Same thing. Okay. So that's why we just use the reciprocal. Now, I can tell you guys there is a little bit of a trick. You also, if you wanted to kind of speed this up a little bit, if you wrote it like this, you could also say sine of theta is equal to negative 1 over the square root of 2. So rather than reciprocating the left side, you could just reciprocate the right side. And then you'd basically just simplify the right side, and you'd be good to go. I kind of did a couple extra steps to teach why that works. Yeah, I would just, I mean, to me, I would just personally do it that way. Oh, cosecant is that? OK, that means sine is that, right? Because they're reciprocals of each other. But I, don't want, I didn't want to just jump into that, because some students might, have been, might get lost. For that, so that's why I kind of at least went through how can you go from cosecant.